You know, as Christians, as believers, the Lord has given us two specific things, two specific things that he calls us to do as believers. We call them the two sacraments of the church. One is when you become a believer to be water baptized in his name. And that's a once and for all and forever event, water baptism. It's where Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse six, uh, <clears throat> I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me because he's the one that made the way and he is the truth and this is the life. And when somebody believes that in their heart, they step forward and as an expression of that ordained by God, they are water baptized. The second thing is something we're gonna do next week and that is on a regular basis celebrate the Lord's Supper together, as he called us to do. It's that time of remembering his body that was broken for us and his blood that was shared for us that bought our salvation. 100% bought it, cleared it, took care of it. And we celebrate that in a way he gave us to do it, by taking the bread his body broken for us, taking the cup, his blood shed for us, and receiving that ourselves. Together is the body of Christ. Just talking with a sister over here in our little sharing time, and we were just celebrating the fact that the Christ in my heart is the Christ in her heart, and that makes us one. And that's the way Jesus designed it to be. So that's what we're doing. People have asked me, why water baptism? Why do you do that? After all, you're not saved by being baptized. You're saved simply by faith in Jesus Christ. And that is so true. The theme verse of Scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We like Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. He imputes his righteousness to us on that basis. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So there it is. Settled, you're saved. Why get water baptized? Two simple reasons. Number one, because he commanded us to do it. That should be enough. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And when Peter gave his very first sermon at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit had come upon the body and Jesus and Peter stood out there and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ for the first time in the power of the Holy Spirit, people's hearts were, were, were stabbed. And they said, what, what, what should we do? What do we need to do? And here's Peter's response, Acts 2.38. Peter said to them, repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You'll receive it just like we've received it. You'll receive it. And that's what they did, Acts 2.41. And so, so then those who had received his word, guess what? Were baptized. And that day there was added about 3,000 souls. And so you see it consistently in the book of Acts, the birth and the beginning of the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ that is alive and well and, and going to this very day. Acts is the only book in the Bible that doesn't have an end. You notice that in reading Acts? It doesn't have an end. That's because the beat goes on. 
here we are. So you see it. You see it right there in Acts. For instance, when Peter was sent by the Lord to open up the gospel to the Gentile world, he went to the house of the Roman centurion Cornelius, who had gathered a bunch of Gentile friends. And Jews didn't go into Gentile homes, but the Lord called Peter to go into that home and share Jesus with them, which he did obediently. And here's what happened. Acts 10, verse 44, and while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who were listening to the message. They were receiving it. And all the circumcised believers, that would be the Jews that were with Peter, who came with Peter, were amazed. Are you kidding me, Gentiles? Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on Gentiles also. I'm so thankful for that. And it says in verse 47 of that chapter, Peter speaking, surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, Kenny. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? We see <clears throat> Paul on his second missionary journey in Philippi. He gets thrown into prison with Silas. The Philippian jailer, you know, is there. And during the night, there's that big earthquake. The chains and the bonds fall off. The Philippian jailers are about to, you know, commit Harry Carey because he figures his prisoners have escaped. And Paul yells out, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. And he came in with a lamp, trembling. What must I do to be saved? And here's what Paul said, verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved in your, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. And he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized in all his household. Isn't that interesting? Chapter 19, there's a group of disciples in the city of Ephesus. Paul is on his third missionary journey. And these, these guys have heard about John the Baptist, but that's just all they knew, the baptism of John the Baptist. And so when Paul found that out, here's what he said in Acts 19, verse 4 and 5, and John baptized you with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is in Jesus. Grab this. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see that consistently all through the word. You see, God giving the commission to be baptized as a believer in Jesus Christ. And it's commanded by God. And then you see the apostles carrying it out consistently. So that's why we are publicly water baptized in Jesus Christ to this very day. That's what we're doing. So we do it because he told us to. You believe, be baptized. Secondly, because of what it represents. The word in, in the Greek is baptizo. There is no English translation for that word. That's why we transliterate it and call it baptize in the Bible. We're using the Greek word, baptize because we don't have a word for it. The root that that word comes from is a word that means to dip. And so that's what we do, and that's what we believe they did. We go into the water, and we, we dip them down in the water and bring them back up. And the reason for that is it's a beautiful expression and picture of death and resurrection. And it's, it, it, what, it is, what it is basically saying, what the person is saying now that they believe in Jesus, they publicly are identifying with him, knowing that he is their salvation, not their good works, not their ability to be a good Christian, but 100% in him. 
to spite us. And so you get in that water and you identify with him through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. Yeah, you don't deserve that. Of course you don't. None of us do, do we? It's his grace. That's the good news of the gospel. Every other religion in the world is going to require you to do something to hopefully save yourself. Can't happen. Only he can save you. And we identify with him in his death and resurrection. I like the way Paul puts it in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? There it is. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Don't you love that one? So really, it's a picture, too, of that old you, dead, buried, gone. And there's a new you now, a resurrected you, in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. It's like that old, lost, covered with sin, destined for eternal hell, is dead buried and gone forever. And there's been a resurrection. In Jesus, there's a new you. I don't feel that new. Uh, Here's the difference. Christ is in you. Christ is in your heart. Loving your soul, forgiving and there to be Lord and guide of your life. That makes you a totally new person. That makes you a radically different person than you were before you received him. That's the whole difference right there. Jesus is in your heart and life through the Holy Spirit. And that's his guarantee. So goodbye, old you gone forever. What a beautiful expression of that. See you later. Never. Never see you later. (sighs) Ah, Jesus, thank you. Isn't that glorious? And it's also a picture of, of just a complete cleansing, isn't it? Instead of just standing there and, you know, saying, okay, I'm a new person. It's a wonderful way to express it. Just go down underwater completely and just, you've been 100% cleansed. And yet you've come up clean, forgiven, new in Jesus Christ. I remember baptism, you know, in the, where I did them in California. I would did them in a river or a lake or something like that. We had a lot, we had the Truckee River right there. We had Lake Tahoe. We had Donner Lake and so that's where we would do our baptisms. And I remember one guy, he was an older teen, probably in his upper teens. And I knew this kid and I knew kind of where he'd been. And now he was just giving his heart to Jesus 100%. And uh, I had a little fun with him. We had a baptism. You know, I was baptizing different ones. And this little fella, I got him out there. And I said, I'm going to baptize you now in the name of Jesus. And I put him under the water. And when I got him under the I went, <laughs> before I brought him back out. (laughs) Everybody cracked up, and he laughed, and we rejoiced in the Lord, the new man that he was in Jesus. I remember an eighth grade boy baptizing him in the Pacific Ocean when I was a youth pastor, and he was the last one I baptized, and we walked out together, and he said, Pastor Brian, I feel clean all over. You see, brethren, this is a... A public declaration that you are now a follower of Jesus Christ. I like the way Paul puts it in Titus 3, 5. He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. And I love this. By the washing of regeneration. 
and renewing by the Holy Spirit. As he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, a creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And that's, that's what the expression is saying. It's happened in your heart. And now, in just humble obedience to him, you are publicly water baptized, declaring that to the world. I like to look at it this way. It's, there's the envelope of your life, and here's, here's Jesus in that new life, and you got the goods when you received him. And then you step forward to be water baptized. You're like, <laughs> that is, seal the envelope. This is it. Count me a follower of his from this day forward. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to get into this little pool of water over here and baptize some folks in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to invite them right now to go through this door to make sure they're all ready to go those that are being baptized. And I'm going to add this. If there's any of you here that know that in your heart you've received him as Lord and Savior of your life, and you're realizing, I should be water baptized. I want to be water baptized. You can do it this morning. Do you realize that? Do you, they have shorts and T-shirts and towels right through that door there. Or you can get baptized in the clothes you're wearing. That's okay. But I invite you to get up from where you're sitting right now and go through that door there and get ready to be baptized. The offer is there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend a little time worshiping the Lord while we get ready to go. So let's worship, and then we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate with those who are being water baptized. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Chains on. 